Good evening YouTubers. So I did promise that I would do a video on LFS, Linux from scratch. Linux from scratch, despite what you might think, is not a distribution of Linux or a distribution of GNU, but rather is an instruction set on how to create a distribution or essentially how to build an operating system from scratch. First of all, this is my desktop for LFS. This is what I use usually. So um, I don't tend to use um, a lot of uh, graphically intensive programs or anything like that. Uh, and so for me, um, Linux from scratch is a good option. So let me just perhaps first uh, highlight what LFS is. Okay. So this is the Linux from scratch main web page, and in it you can see a variety of options here. I'll just give you a brief explanation of what, uh, say, the top two, top th three, four are. So um, LFS is the base install for all of these. Um, it uh, provides you basically a boot to command line. BLFS gives you uh, a set of applications uh, at your leisure to install and uh, it's not uh, entirely different from the instructions that you receive in LFS in most regards. ALFS is automated Linux from scratch. That's really targeting two, two use cases. That is to test the build instructions that are provided in the book. And secondly, for people who are experienced enough to run LFS and BLFS, it provides an automated way to at least uh, extract the scripts, to scrape the scripts from the, from the book. And uh, then we have uh, cross Linux from scratch, so you can do other architectures. You can compile for other other architectures, and this is a security-focused version. Then, there, um, don't bother with the live CD. It uh, it doesn't actually work uh, in terms of uh, being able to build LFS from it or a recent version of it. And you can use some other distribution like um, uh, you know Debian or something like that, and uh, just uh, get build dependencies uh, installed. Go from there, and uh, here we go. Some patches as well. So if I go into LFS and I click there, I can read the book online. And uh, there's a stable version, Errata, and the stable version itself. There's also an SVN version of development. I should call it an, a, a, not an SVN because that implies they're using subversion. I'm not sure that they are using subversion, but there is also a development version of it. But basically the book is laid out like this, a set of chapters and some dependencies. This is conducting the temporary system there and uh, also installing the basic software to, to, to build the distro, set of boot, scri uh, boot scripts, etc. So we'll close that down. Okay. So this is uh, this video is essentially just an introduction. I'm going to be doing more on LFS and, and up and coming videos uh, just to describe what's going on here. So I'm using i3. I'm using uh, D menu, which you just saw come up there, with some customized colors and customized fonts, as uh, set in my um, the i3 config. Okay, um, and a wallpaper that I've, I've put, which is the the open Solaris wallpaper of old. Uh, and for those of you who are familiar with i3, you have the ability to navigate through. Um, you know. Uh, you can, if I go, f uh, if I press D menu, then I can just go through the various, just using the Windows, the, the Windows key or the mod key as they like to call it, go through like that. So I do have some desktop applications installed, but perhaps I should talk about some of the uh, things that are unique about LFS. So there is no package management system. If I type apt, if I type RPM, if I type, uh, what else could I think of? Uh, yum. Zyper. 
sorry, yum, cipher, uh, emerge, none of this is here. And just also to show that I actually am using LFS, you can see here that the kernel is indicating so that I am actually using it. And if I go, no, it doesn't have it there because it's not a normal distribution, I guess. So, um, and uh, you can see there I'm using a kernel. I should really be using an updated kernel since there's a vulnerability against all kernels uh, after 3.8 that haven't received the patch for the keyring. Uh, vulnerability, you can look in Google about that. But yeah, so there's no package management here. So what do I actually have installed? Well, um, without going all into my emails and stuff like that, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I actually do have Thunderbird installed. Okay, well, I won't go into that because I don't want to reveal my personal contacts so much. Um, and I'll go into uh, like, uh, Okay, so one thing I had last night was uh, slash uh, opt slash uh, what do we got? bin slash L office. Yeah, okay. So I had bug last night. Okay. This is a uh, liberate office. Oh, is it version 5.0.1? Blah blah blah. Okay, I, I installed this by hand using the instructions on the BLFS book. But I found that if I do this, and then I try to, it closes down. Okay, so that's a bad version. Okay, now normally in a distro you just report it as a bug, a, a bug, and then go on from there. But no, because I use LFS, I have a lot of system libraries installed. If I go slash user slash lib, you just notice how many I have here. If I actually go um, sort, and then and oh, actually maybe I can just go straight to NL. Yeah, you see I've got like heaps of libraries and stuff installed. So it kind of makes it easier and easier to build things on LFS as, as your install matures. So what I decided to do is I met a couple of new dependencies of LibreOffice and I installed the new version of LibreOffice. So uh, I go like this and you'll notice, uh, yeah okay, so I'll start recovery, refresh. And uh, if I go like this now, you'll notice the interface is slightly different and uh, I can do that now and it doesn't crash and uh, that's because I'm using the latest version you see and yeah so um, and it was supplied by BLFS but that's a myth because uh, that was just a compile time option that I set and I still let, let it stay as BLFS but I just use the, I use the old instructions for the new compile just making sure that I had the dependencies I needed it uses GDK3 now so it's uh, looking a little bit different but yeah, there's one advantage. I don't have to stick with the system version. I don't have to stick with the maintainer's version. Now, admittedly, I wouldn't have to do that on another distribution too. With like Debian, you've got the build depends, uh, like um, or build dep uh, command uh, for apt, uh, so you can install a whole bunch of, I should say apt-get, you can all install a whole bunch of dependencies, and that's kind of cool. But with the BLFS, LFS, I can actually choose what dependencies I want to use. So I'll show you a couple of other things that I use in here. So I use IRSSI. You guys are probably using XChat or HexChat or something like that, but uh, um, yeah. Okay, so that, that didn't go. I'll just go IRSSI uh, irc.freenode.org You see? And this is how I connect that. I just um, another thing too is I can just open up another one like this. Go okay. uh, enter. So I'm using mod enter to open up another um, another terminal, which I'm using urxvt. It's a minimalist terminal. It's kind of easy to compile and stuff. So and uh, configure. So that's what I do. Um, but yeah. So I also use Macabre. So it's a, a command line command line version of, uh, of a, an, a a chat client. You just quit like that very nicely. So 
Yeah, I use these these terminal apps. I do my source compiler if I've got an external application, like I told you about LibreOffice just before. So. And um, yeah, I just go in here and you can see all these things that I got. I got the latest like LibreOffice in here. A lot of these things don't come with BLFS, so I've had to install them myself. But I install them in slash user slash local, like I've suggested before to you guys. You can just sort of have a look at my libs. Got quite a few libs in there that I've installed, and yeah. So basically, this is the the way I do things. You probably think, "Oh, how does he play videos?" I use MPV, but I'm going to go back to MPlayer shortly. But I'll just show you that as well. So just go, just go into here, and uh, find a video. Um, oh, we'll go to my screencast or something like that, and just go MPV. And, and you can see that I can just play full, you know, full screen it just like that. It's kind of um, easy. Uh, kind of like to do the command line stuff. Um, let me have a look. Fine. And start up PDF. I'll find. I'd try and do everything via the command line. My preference, really. Um, is there anything I can... I don't know. Um, hmm. Okay, so there's like this. Let me have a look. I don't know what this is going to produce, but let's try. It's a new PDF. There's probably a programming problem that I've solved. Yeah, so there's a there's a like a programming problem that I've I've solved. So but you can just um yeah, you can just uh use me PDF as a kind of low low intensity PDF program. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. As I say I've got like Thunderbird installed and LibreOffice and MPV. I think I've got ChessX installed, perhaps. Let me have a look. That might have. Yeah, I've got ChessX installed. So I can do more chess stuff in here when I want to. So it's not limiting for me. Um, it might be tricky for some people, but for me, it's like the ideal way. I don't have a distro forcing their, their ways onto me. I don't have like Unity or something crazy like that forcing a snake on me. I don't I, I choose the desktop environment that I want to use, which I don't really use a desktop environment. I use I3 window manager with you know, D menu and stuff like that. Use FET to view images. FET is actually providing more wallpaper at the moment, but it's much the same thing to, to view images. Anyway, this is just uh, pretty much an introduction video, nothing too exciting, but I'll uh, I'll probably show you around a bit more um you know, in future, but yeah, this is my LFS install. It's not entirely like for the faint-hearted. There are all sorts of little management things to care about, like printing and stuff like that. How do you get how do you get it to print? And like Alsa behaves a little bit differently, so I actually don't need Pulse Audio on this system because Alsa seems to be able to mix, well, not mix the channels, but merge them. It seems to be able to merge. I can hear the audio of both like a video playing and a song playing at the same time if I want to. It, it doesn't seem to have a problem with that on this on this particular setup. I can have the kernel that I want. Yeah, pretty much do what I want, how I want. So something that you guys might be interested in doing. It takes away the distro hand feeding you and I want to do that more and more. I just want to sort of do my own thing and not always be doing what a distro tells me you know the way they want to do it you got to have to get this you got to be concerning it you know dependency hell that I just find it's a lot less hassle this way I'm just install the dependencies in the right place and tell package config about them and you know LD config and all that sort of stuff and and off I go anyway as I say this is just a bit of an introduction I hope you uh, enjoyed the video please like subscribe and comment uh, below 
um, and please tell me if you'd like me to show you some other things. I, I no doubt will show you some other things as I as I think of them. But uh, yeah, um, have a look and uh, and see if you uh, like LFS. And uh, yeah, don't forget to comment below. Anyway, good night, guys.